All righty. Let's do this. Let us do this. Oof. All right. What is up, my fellow nerds? Uh, looks like there's about 15 of you guys out there waiting for me to blow up some Proxmox. How convenient. Um, who we got in the chat? Let's see. Uh, see, Alan. Alan was the first person to ever chat in my Twitch live stream. So if you don't know, I'm doing a dual stream right now. So I should be live on YouTube as well as on Twitch. So depending on where you're at, um, yeah, doesn't matter. You should see my beautiful face no matter what. Uh, who else we got? Uh, Cosmo Tactical. Hey, mates, what's up, my dude? Uh, Jay Hess. See you in the chat hanging out. What is up? Uh, Practical IT with Jeremy Leak. Uh, what's happening, everybody? I do love me some Proxmox. I do love me some Proxmox as well, Jeremy. Um, who else? Joel Chan. I'm still deciding if I should run my application using many, many uh, LXC uh, Linux containers or Proxmox. Uh, running Ubuntu, running Dockers. Um, I mean, it's it's up to you. If if your your stack of software is more geared towards uh, Docker and hosting Docker images, um, you could go that route, uh, packing it all into one. Uh, you could run an Ubuntu container with Docker inside of that. You can run um, an Ubuntu or a, just a whatever Linux distro server you want on a VM with Docker inside of that. Uh, you could run Portainer in its own container or VM. Um, that's, that's up to you. I mean, it just depends on how you want to allocate your hardware and uh, stuff like that. If you decide you want to use Docker uh, versus Linux containers, it's kind of preference at that point. Uh, Marcian, Dur I, I'm going to not say that name correctly. Marcian Duraz. Uh, greetings from Poland. I know for a fact I didn't say that right, <laughs> if that name is Polish, but I appreciate you being here, my man. It's got to be pretty late over there. Um, Alan says, both streams looking good. That is good to hear. Um, I remember the... <laughs> Alan Alien episode. Oh, okay. You were here for the whole uh, Alien Alan debacle. So he is now Alan. Um, he will never be referred to as Alien because I, I'm owning that mistake for the rest of my times. Um, oh, it looks like I have the wrong thing on this other screen. Let me, let me, let me change that. Uh, this? No. Uh... This, there we go. Cool, 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 cool. Uh, 1 a.m., yeah, it's pretty late. Uh, Brian Godfrey, hi from New Zealand, late arrival. I mean, if you're talking about stream-wise, you are right on time. We just started, Brian, so um, I assume it's late there, though, as well. I assume that's what you're talking about. Man, so I'm dual streaming, and on. I'm trying to read uh, the comment section but it won't auto scroll to the bottom so i'm having to like manually scroll using streamlabs it's kind of annoying i don't know why it's like that huh 5 p.m here in arizona yep that makes it a lot easier oh 1 p.m not bad not bad uh yeah this is also on twitch uh raid owl oh i don't have the thing up at the top right here but i'll have to add that at some point but uh, it's Raid Owl TV on Twitch, if you want to check it out over there. Um, yeah, so we're going to wait a little bit, see if anybody wants to uh, hop on in. Yeah, Alan it does read both streams at the same time. So, uh, yeah, but I, I don't know. It's I can switch to just Twitch or just or the multi-stream, YouTube and Twitch. But for some reason, it doesn't, it doesn't auto-scroll. It's so annoying. 
Uh, can we can we refresh chat? Maybe maybe now to auto scroll. I don't know. Starkey, what up? Welcome. It's Friday. Um, yeah, I guess that makes sense if you're on the other side of the world. Um, that is how the days of the weeks typically go. But yeah, so a little update. Uh, I just got back from Florida. Uh, what's today? Thursday. We got back Tuesday night. Got back Tuesday night. Um, and I finished editing and uploading a vlog video of that to my other YouTube channel. Um, so I did that, finished that yesterday, filmed a video for Raid Owl yesterday and today, edited it, edited it, edited it, um, so that's done. I just exported it. That'll get uploaded to YouTube tonight and will be live tomorrow morning. It's not it's not one of the main videos I wanted to do. It was one of like the easier ones because I don't have time because I'm leaving again tomorrow morning for Dallas. Lots of traveling in this week, so I didn't have a lot of time to do one of the uh one of the major project videos that I wanted to, but you know, you got to do what you got to do. I don't have much time, so it'll be it'll be a decent little video. Um, I'd recommend going straight OBS with chat plugins. I'll have to check it out. Uh, hi. Hi from Jason's Lab. What up, Jason's Lab? Welcome. CJ. There it is. CJ in the building. I'm loving the vlog content. Well, I'm glad you like it. It was fun filming. I think it came out pretty well. Um, considering we didn't do much in Florida and the vlog came out pretty good. Um, I'm wondering if I we actually did cool stuff on the vlog, how that would turn out. So I don't know, it won't be my last vlog. I had fun doing it. Uh, we'll see where that channel goes. Um, I'm on holiday too, a nice staycation. Those are good, especially after traveling a lot like we're doing recently. I would like a nice stay staycation to Catch up on some editing and some other videos that I want to do, but yeah, can't complain. Can't complain. Um, getting stuff done, having a good time doing it. So no bigs. Um, oh, a shout out to uh, TrueNAS. They messaged me on uh, Twitter and congratulated me on hitting ten thousand subscribers on Radal, and they want to send me like a swag package. So that's really cool of them. They didn't have to do that at all. Um, so that's pretty legit and i appreciate that um david uh secor secor i can't read I, i'm like dyslexic or something hello from louisville uh colorado louisville colorado i like colorado my dad lives up in colorado but okay um welcome everybody um to the stream so as the title suggests what we were going to do today is blow up Proxmox and try to restore it. So the reason I'm doing this is because I run Proxmox as my main server uh, operating system, and I have backup scripts running, but I've never actually had to use them. And obviously I'm not gonna test that out on my production system. So I figured, after however many months it's been running, I should probably test and make sure I can actually uh, back up or restore uh, my system in the event of a failure. So that's what we're going to try to do today. Uh, we'll see how it goes. It may go poorly. I know in a lot of my streams, I do things like ad hoc, and sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. But if they don't work, it's a learning experience. It may be a path that you would have went down and failed as well. So maybe I can save you some time um, showing you my failures. So yeah, that's the plan. Uh, Jason's Lab, you're doing so good. Uh, Untangle reached out to me and got me a box of goodies too. Nice. Everybody loves free swag, man. I love it. Uh, until you do a successful, uh, I can't read. Uh, until you 
until you do a successful restore, you're not truly protected. I agree. Gamer Cat Meow. Hello. Meow. Welcome. Uh, nice threads uh, for my work. Uh, I try to get as much merch from Sony, Microsoft, Nintendo, so I can wear them instead of my itchy uniform. Smart. Smart. Uh, PD, Phil AM Entertainment. I've done a restore recently. I'm glad to have my backups also stored on my portable drives. Yes. Do not store your backups on the system that you're trying to back up. Uh, definitely don't do that. We break things so you don't have to. What up? Yeah, that's that can be that can be the uh, the motto of my live streams. But um, yeah, so the system I have running, let's let's change this up a bit so you, you can actually see the screen and not just my face. So the setup we are running today, I'm running this on this was intended to be a backup server a while ago, but it's just turned into my ad hoc wipe and try out different OS's machine. So uh, we installed a fresh version, uh, a brand new crispy clean uh, Proxmox 7 install on this machine. I did it this morning. Uh, if you're wondering if I secretly went ahead and tested all this stuff before stream to make me make myself look smart. I did not. So we're doing this all uh, live. Um, whether that's for the best or not is to be determined. But yeah, so I'm still Proxmox on here. I have one. Is this the right? Yeah. So I have one uh, Linux container up and running, just running uh, Ubuntu, I think 21.4. I have a couple of storage uh, devices set up. So in here, I've gone in and set up. So I have four drives, four hard drives on here, uh, four two terabyte drives. I've gone in and set up a ZFS uh, pool with two of them. So I have a mirror. I've also set up a um, ext4 uh, directory using another one of the drives and another, the last drive is just blank. I don't have anything on there yet, but um, we can also go in and add some things as well before we run the backup script. So for this test, I'm going to be using, um, I found this, a lot of people have said they've used this, uh, said it worked well. So this is a backup script that uh, obviously I want to give credit. Der Danilo um, created that uh, runs as, it's just a, uh, shell script and that will run and do a backup of your major directories and then pull them back in well not you'll have to manually copy them back over after but it's going to create a zip um, folder of these uh, nice and compressed store them in a directory that you see fit and then you can restore it after so this is the code um, i've gone in it doesn't look like anything too crazy um, it's creating uh, various um, zipped directories based on um, the following paths and then zipping those up into a single folder. So I have this, I've put this in my cron daily um, file cron.daily file so that it runs every day and does a backup. And the way I'm doing this is I'm backing it up to a um, Samba share. So uh, it's on my backup system right now just to test and it's backing up directly to that system. And like I said before, you're not gonna wanna back up directly to the server that you're trying to back up because obviously if that blows up, you don't have your backup. So um, to another, like a NAS or something, to a external hard drive if you want. Um, those would probably be the two best options uh, for performing your backups. Um, let's see. Do, 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 do. I have a backup on a time capsule, external drive, and LTO. Nice, nice. Uh, Sergeant5778, that's uh, Matt Sargent. What up, Matt Sargent? Uh, welcome. Uh, Proxmox uh, is a future plan for a build I have. VM and sounds fun. 
It is. It is until it breaks and it's not fun. But now for the most part, it's it's I, I enjoy Proxmox. I tell everybody uh, for if you're new to um, home servers and especially Linux in general, I like to recommend Unraid. I just think that the GUI and the user experience is a little bit more user friendly than Proxmox. But um, if you do have some Linux experience, I would recommend Proxmox. I've had basically no issues with Proxmox, and I've been able to do pretty much everything that I've needed um, with my use case. So, yeah. Uh, Jag test art. Jag. J oh my God, Jag test arcanado. I, I butchered that. Or is it Jag Star Kanto? Jag T. All right. Anyway, thanks for the good content. Are you calc are you uh calicating words? Uh any of your servers. I would be interesting to learn uh how to prepare and secure calicated uh Proxmox server. I uh, uh, are you talking about um like calicated where have i heard that term before let me look up so i don't misspeak cola cal am i stupid i can't even freaking read Y'all quickly learn that I'm very dyslexic. All right, you're gonna have to explain to me this so I don't dig even more and sound like an idiot. Co-located, okay. Um, so I have a, so I've tested this. I wanna deploy one remotely, but I have a main server in the other room that's like in my loft area. Then I have my backup server in here, but I haven't set up my remote server. I've tested it. I want to deploy one at my dad's place um, in Colorado. He has surprisingly good internet for living out of the middle of nowhere. So next time I go up there, I'm bringing a small, I think it was in, I don't know where it is physically in my room, but I did a video on a tiny home server build some time ago. I don't remember how long ago it was. Um, but I will set up a do, 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 sync thing on there. Sync thing is how I back up pretty much everything. So um, I'm going to be running sync thing on that server. And I'm just going to deploy it, throw it in somewhere in my dad's house and be like, yo, just let this box suck up a little bit of, of electricity. And uh have all my stuff at least backed up <laughs> in a remote environment. Um, hello, that is not a language that I can speak, but <laughs> welcome. Uh, any re any recommendations? Way of the Lao, any, re any recommendations on getting started with Linux? I would like to become more fluent. Um, uh, sorry, I meant using it in the command line. So it it depends on on there are many distributions or distros, excuse me, of Linux that you can go with. You can go with some of the popular easier ones like um, Ubuntu is obviously one of the biggest ones. You can go with Mint. You could also go with something like um, what's the other Pop OS, pretty much Ubuntu, like a reskinned. Although they don't like it when you say it's a reskinned Ubuntu. Or you can go with like Arch and be really cool, but I wouldn't recommend that. Um, the command line isn't something you necessarily need. You can use it on whatever distro of Linux you want. So you can install Ubuntu and play around with the desktop. And then if you decide you want to start doing a couple of things using the command line, simple file manipulation and transfers and um, want to get more comfortable with that, go ahead. Um, just 
deploying a server and SSHing into it will get you pretty comfortable with the command line by default, considering you don't have a GUI when you SSH in. So, um, yeah, that's my recommendation. I don't, I don't really have any really good, um, so what I'm looking for words of wisdom for that, but it's all about just time and using it and practice and you'll, you'll slowly get the hang of it. Um, Choco, chocolated when you pour chocolate into your server. That's delicious. Um, yeah, so let's, uh, let's talk about this setup that I have running over here. So like I said, I have the ZFS pool, I have the EXT4, and then I have this backup. So what this is, this is my Samba share over here running on my, uh, backup server. So um, I've set that up. I mean, you can go into your data center, go to storage. That's where you can see, you know, all the storage you have set up and you can see I've created this SIFS share, um, connected to my backup system. And that is mounted to MNT PVE backups, um, or the ID. So if I go into that location, or if I show you what's in that location, a location, what was it? Mount PV uh, backups. You'll see we have one um, one backup that ran. I ran this earlier manually to test it just to confirm it actually does something. So, uh oh, now it's not scrolling automatically anymore. Yeah, this multi-stream chat thing is annoying. Nick MG, welcome. Good evening. Welcome to the stream. We haven't blown anything up yet. But um, what else can we add to to test this out? So maybe we add a Samba share to this and see if it restores any Samba shares. So Proxmox makes it easy to connect to a Samba share, but for some reason they don't make it easy to create one. It's not included in Proxmox by default, which is, I don't know why. Proxmox, like I said, is very good as like a hypervisor, high level OS, but if you want to use it as a NAS and data storage, it's not very good. Uh, definitely recommend going with something like Open Media Vault or True NAS um, if you're looking for a NAS first based uh, hypervisor OS. So, um, let's go in and I'm pretty sure I don't even have it installed. Yeah. Um, what is this? Not Samba. It's, uh, I guess it's just SMB. No. SMBD. Um, pretty sure it's Samba. There we go. Always forget the app update. Hey, Nick's here. That's right. Um, might want to check uh, if it's on slow mode. Is it on slow mode? I don't think it is. No Samba for you. I broke it when building earlier. Yeah, you were you were going hard on the Samba earlier. I'm not. I'm just I'm just installing the uh, the base version provided to me. Uh, CM Nor, uh, I created my SMB folders via Open Media Vault. I've never attempted to create them in PVE. Yeah, it's not too bad in um, in uh, Proxmox. So you have to install Samba and then set it up. So if you want to set up shares, let's do it in here. I guess, what is the mount point? Let's find a, a nice mount point. Uh, do, 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 do. Can't I just do... 
OSPLK. I don't think it's OSPLK, is it? Uh, MNT PVE EXT4. So we'll make a directory in there to share via Samba. So we'll say um, MKDIR MNT PVE XT4. Create one just called Samba. We will um, just give all open control to it. And then what we have to do is you have to edit the SMB configuration file, which is located in uh, etc sm no samba uh, smb.conf. And this is going to be what's loaded when the Samba uh, service starts. So to add a uh, Samba share, you go down here and just add another entry. That is not the right um, stuff. So you'd say like, you give it a name. So I want to call this one. Um, oh, yeah, we can name it after somebody in the chat. I haven't done this in a while. Who is this getting named after? Somebody who, who's been around and hasn't had one named after them. Um, J. Hess. Let's, let's call this one J. Hess. We the best. Shout out to DJ Khaled. I'll say uh, comment equals Samba share for testing. Uh, path is what we say was mount pv uh, ext4 samba samba I think yeah uh browsable browsable words browsable yes uh read only no uh, guest okay. No. Um, I'm trying to think. It should allow all users to it. Let's test it out. Let's test it out. So, I think that's the only stuff I need. Let's write this. Uh, restart. Um, Samba, which is SMBD service. Just kidding. I have to say restart. So now we should have a share on this, um, on, on, on the server. So let's see if it even comes up. So 10.0.0.74 slash, we called it, we just called it. Oh yeah, look, it shows up. Bang. Now I don't know. I wonder if it'll just use my root account by default. No. So I think we have to have a Samba user. So we might have to do that. So let's create a Samba user. Uh, I can't remember the command for it. Uh, create Samba user Linux. I think this is the one I used last time. I guess it won't let you use it. All right, all right, whatever. We'll just follow this. Add user. Who wants to be the user? Who Who are we going to add? Who's it going to be? We'll just add a new user to our system and then give it a Samba password. Uh, do, 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 do. Should remove the enterprise uh, repos. Uh, yeah, I got to do that. This isn't optimally set up. Uh, do you run Open Media Vault in uh, Proxmox for a NAS? I've done both. Um, but yes, on my backup system, uh, when I initially set it up, I had Open Media Vault running as its own VM. Um, within Proxmox and just passed the drives through 
uh, directly to that. And it works perfectly fine. Um, I'll try not to nod off if it's quite late for me. Hey, no worries, man. Just keep the stream open to boost those numbers. That's all I ask. If you fall asleep, that's perfectly fine. I fall asleep to streams almost every night. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Uh, Creepinson, what up? Welcome. Welcome back to the stream, man. Congrats on the 10K subs. I appreciate that. It was a uh, it was a cool milestone. We hit it while I was on vacation. If you want to um, check out the vlog, I actually had a reaction because I was vlogging when I hit 10K. So if you want to see that uh, video, uh, go check out. I guess I can link the video to you guys. I really want to keep this channel like low key for the time being. It's just my name. I wonder if it actually comes up now. Nope, still still this this guy who has like a billion of these like I don't know what they are. But he shows up a lot. This guitar guy shows up a lot. But yeah, this is this is my channel. 16 subs. We are killing it. But uh, if you want to check out the uh, vlog from that, I will uh, link that here. Here, I'll put it. I'll put it in chat if I can figure it out. Um. Yeah, that's me. We're we're not gonna watch this. Okay, where where was I? Where was I? Let me catch up on some. Uh, yeah, SMB password. Yeah, after creating a user, I'm gonna I'm gonna get I'm gonna, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Uh, I'm running OMV6, which is hosting a Plex server, uh, Qubitorrent VPN container via Docker and Portainer. Yeah, man, like Portain or a good hypervisor OS like Proxmox or Unraid with a dedicated Docker container or virtual machine and maybe a dedicated NAS OS like TrueNAS or Open Media Vault. That's like, that's like the, the, the Trinity. That's like all you really need, I think. I mean, obviously everybody's use case is different, but a nice hypervisor OS with um, a Docker instance and uh, a NAS OS, then you're good to go. Meow is a good name. All right, well, name it after Meow. Lo-fi uh, hip hop girl doesn't count. <laughs> uh, I'd recommend skipping OMV5 and go straight to six. Yeah, I've tried OMV5 and six. Six is a much better experience, I will agree. Uh, hey, channel your sub to is live. Oh yeah, me. I am subscribed to myself. Uh, Gamer Cat Meow. That's 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 what we're gonna name this. So we're gonna we're gonna create a user, gamer cat meow, and uh, the password is going to be. I'm just going to say password just because. That's what I have for all this stuff, just so I don't forget anything. Blah 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 blah. Information correct? Yeah. Uh, then you can say SMB password for uh, gamer. Gamer cat meow password password failed to find failed to find entry for user gamer cat did I spell that wrong did I skip something oh slash a what does the a uh, argument do. All right, we in here. I guess I have to restart uh, Samba, maybe. Okay, now can we connect to it? Freaking detour we are taking. Find it. I don't even remember what we named it. What did we name it? J Hess? Jay has we the best. <laughs> so that's the problem when I start naming these things. 
ridiculous stuff. When I want to go use it, I completely forget. All right. Uh, gamer cat meow password. We're in. Okay. We have a Samba share hosted on our server uh, running in uh, Proxmox. So if by chance you wanted to know how to do that, well, there you go. <laughs> now we have it. Um, Z Y Z Y, uh, fix Z Y F X uh, six eight. Brett, what's your IT background? Um, I have so I have a bachelor's degree in electrical engineering, and I have been working for a a utility company for the last eight years. Um. I started in a training and planning group and eventually just started doing more, taking on more like individual coding projects, uh, starting with super basic stuff and like visual basic and eventually moving up to desktop applications with .NET and then into web apps and then messing around um, on my spare time with like Swift and iOS apps and getting into React uh, JS development. Stuff like that, and then eventually branching off in the home servers and blah, blah, blah. But now I work in IT as a IT specialist where we support some Java applications and develop stuff in .NET and uh, C Sharp most of the time. But yeah, I don't have any real computer science degrees or certificates or anything. But, you know, the best way to learn this stuff honestly isn't through certificates or degrees. It's having an interest or a genuine interest in things um, when it comes to coding and development and just trying and practicing. Because um, you can have all the degrees you want, but if you're genuinely not interested in it, there's going to be like a 15 year old who thinks coding is fun. That's going to be way better than you at it. So yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. Um, not to say I'm even any good at it, but I still do enjoy doing it. So yeah, uh, Brandon Ballard, subbed. Appreciate that. I can't say that the um, the uh, the fan base from Raid Owl will be super interested in my personal channel where I'll be like vlogging and just talking about camera equipment, but if you like it, cool. If you don't, you can unsub. That's perfectly fine with me. Um, do you use one container per Docker container do you use one container per Docker container or just one big one trying to decide? So Docker is going to handle however many containers you throw at it um, based on the resources you give it. So I can't think of a really good reason why you'd split up Docker containers or containers to put Docker in unless you really want to physically have certain Docker instances running on specific cores and maybe lower uh, core counts. But for the most part, I just have one container, one big container that I run Docker in and then just throw everything at it. Um, so yeah, I would, I would just, just have one big one. I uh, learned, uh, all my computer know-how from hackers and the matrix. Yeah, I lied about everything. I basically learned everything from, um, what's that movie with Hacker Man? What's that freaking ridiculous movie? Uh, or they go back in time. What's the stupid, I can't think of the name of it. Um, yeah. So let's see. So we got that done. What else can we throw at? our uh so samba and all those configurations are stored in i guess we can take a look at so if we take a look at uh the cron not an etc where's the cron uh I thought it was etc it's not an etc i just added this a while ago what was it oh it is an etc yeah, so I have this etc cron daily PVE, PVE host backup uh, script. 
So this is basically a script I showed before. Um, I went in here and manually set this backup uh, directory variable. You can say, I mean, like he says in the comments, you can specify it yourself by running this command export uh, back underscore deer and then specify the location that you want. But I just went into the code and changed the default instance. Um, doesn't really matter. Uh, we can go through here and kind of step through and see what is going on. Um, temporary storage directory. Uh, what's this doing? So it's just making a temporary directory. Um, register the cleanup to be called an exit signal. Uh, don't change this if not required. So this is setting some variables. Uh, temporary directory for uh, Proxmox ETC, for a PVE location, for the root, for cron. Um, so I guess if you want other locations, extra ones, you would have to go in here and add them yourself. Uh, what's all this doing? Um, function, uh, so these are just, okay, these are functions, file to be saved. So these are, again, all the locations that will be saved. Uh, backup target is the variable we specified earlier. And blah, 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 give you a um, warning, hit return to proceed. And that's just going to run whenever we run it. Uh, are we root aboard? If not, okay. If you're not root, it's not going to run. Uh, check the number of backups. This is basically uh, saying how many backups do you want to keep? And you can change that up here. So max backups is five. I assume that uses it down here somewhere. Um, local old backup. Uh... Max backups. Okay, if uh, list this directory, uh, grep check for, I guess, five of the latest files. I guess that's what it's doing. And then delete. And blah, blah, blah. It's taking all of those same directories, uh, creating a tar, um, compressed file, and backing up the video. The V BIOS, okay, cool, cool. Putting it all in a directory, compressing it, putting it in one final tar file, and then Bob's your uncle. So, yeah, not much to it, honestly. So, I ran that once before. We can run it again uh, with this command. Do, 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 where is it? It's somewhere over there. Uh, run parts, um, the cron daily, which is where this is. Uh, proceed, it's going to do all this stuff, compress it, blah, blah, blah. Should be done relatively soon. And done. So here you can see it created all of these uh, tar files, and it should have exported them into my um, location that I specified, which we looked at earlier was this uh, mount PV backups, which remember is not on the local machine, it is on my backup server. Um, it's a Samba share. So look in there and here you can see we have our new one, which is from today at 1841.47, which is 6.41 uh, p.m. So yeah, let me, I, I know I just covered a good bit Lawnmower. No, it's not Lawnmower Man. It was, um, freaking this guy. Hacker Man. It's from Kung Fury. That's what it is. Yeah, this guy. This is where, this is who I learned to code from. If you haven't seen Kung Fury and you like off the wall, like mega parody movies that are just ridiculous then go watch kung fury it's only like an hour long it's ridiculous um a uh, nice thing about omv is that it has docker and portainer included as extras yeah and in omv6 um i think it oh omv extras comes downloaded by default like in omv5 you actually you have to go out and actively download on the extras. I mean, it's only one line, but 
I, I didn't see why they would not include that by default. So it's good that they did that with OMV6. Um, do to do, do to do. Uh, have you heard of the, 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 the This just looks like the Matrix and Bullet Time. Yeah. Uh, Kung Fury was awesome. Hey, I, uh, I choose the other lighting. What the frack? I have lighting specific for my streams. This one is, uh, this one's decent. But, uh, yeah, I could make it darker. What if I went with this lighting? Y'all ready? Do I look ominous and spooky? This is the lighting I should have when I, when I blow up Proxmox. Like I'm a serial killer or something. Um, let's see. Uh, good day. Came across your videos recently. Might start to look at Hypervisor OS projects soon for the first time. Feels like Proxmox is popular on your channel. Start with this. Um, I think so. I, I think I just said this earlier for, for most newcomers. I would recommend Unraid if you're not super familiar with Linux. Uh, Unraid has a really inviting GUI for uh, people who are new to hypervisors or just a Linux environment. Um, it's they, it, You do have to pay for it, but you do get a 30-day free trial. So if you want to try it out, I recommend it. Uh, Proxmox, I recommend it just because I'm very comfortable with it. I started with it and I've used it as my production hypervisor OS for a while now. Oh, so, oh, somebody's home. Hello. How was your workout? Cold. Yeah, it's warm in here. It's warm in here. Did you do some squats? Do some curls, some, no. cur some curls for the girls. No curls, lots of squats, lots uh, of shoulder stuff. Show, show everybody the workout you did. Nah, I'd rather <laughs> not. Yeah, fair. I was, I was just telling them which which hypervisor OS would you go with if you were a new, you were new into hypervisors. Which one would you go with? This one. Yeah. Um, the best one. I figured you'd name the only one you know. Proxmox? Yeah. Proxmox, see, there you go. It's been it's been confirmed. Proxmox is the uh the hypervisor of choice. It's the other one, the TrueNAS. Yeah. TrueNAS is one. Open Media Vault is one. Unraid is one. Ooh. EXCI. Ooh. There's a lot. But yeah, so yeah, I'd I'd say Unraid. It's very inviting. I'd try it out. But if you go with Proxmox, I mean, I I I use it. So if you want to hop in the Discord, I'd be more than welcome to uh, help you out if you uh, go the Proxmox route. Uh, let it be known that you look better in the dark and from a distance. Keep that in mind when lighting for a video. <laughs> Thank you very much. I appreciate that. I will, uh, in that case, I'm going to look real good in about a second. Ah. All right. So now I would go with, uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Go with the uh, Unraid. No, I'm kidding. I know you guys want to see my beautiful face. I wouldn't keep that from you guys. All right. Um, Let's see. So what are, what are we doing? So there's our backup. I guess at this point, I'm trying to see. So let's go back and look at what directories it's saving. So etc, everything in etc, pv cluster, we don't have anything clustered. In our root directory, spool cron. So I'm wondering if that covers... So if it's an ETC, it's everything in the Samba should should stay. Nothing in the mount 
Obviously, we don't want the mount stuff, but if it's in ETC, I'm wondering if by default, all of our um, pools and everything, our uh, storage will be backed up as well. Oh yeah, let's back up the uh, container. I forgot about that. So we obviously want to back up our VMs and containers. So let's do that. I don't remember. I think I ran it already. Let me check. So do backups on your containers. It's um, I, I really like how Proxmox does their backups and restorations. It's super easy. Just go to backups. You can create a job. So I haven't done this yet. So this will be a fresh start. Um, let's create a directory to do that in. So we'll do it directly in our backups. Uh, so same location. So let's go into there. Let's say it was uh, MNT PVE uh, backups. Uh, what's in here? We'll create. Oh, we so it is already set up for um, backups, which they conveniently put by default in a folder called dump. So, yeah, I guess that's where all the shit goes. <laughs> ah! Oh my god, I'm so funny. Anyway. Um, let's go back to backups. It's in data center. Backup. So you go to add. I uh, select a node if you have different nodes. We only have one. Uh, you can pick a storage location. So the way it works is that when you create um, a storage instance, you have to specify it for backups. So let me go show you that first. Um, so in storage, you'll see our list of different storage. So when we create something like a directory or a Samba SIFS share, when you create it, it's going to ask you what type of content do you want to have in there? And these are used for Proxmox itself. So if you want this to be a location where you can store um, disk images, so um, virtual hard drives for VMs and whatnot, uh, you'd select that. ISO images, if you want this to be a location where you can keep all of your ISOs. Um, container templates, so where you want to keep, like you have ISOs for um, VMs, you have container templates for LXC. Um, VM, VZ dump backup files. So this is what you want to check if you want to use this as a backup location. So make sure this is selected. Uh, close that out. And then that means it will show up whenever we try to set backups. So we're gonna go here, click add. That's the location we wanna use. Um, what day of the week do you want it to run? This is multi-select, so you can have it run on specific days if you want. If you just want it to run every Sunday at um, 2, 2 a.m. Uh, you can do all VMs or you can do uh, only selected ones. We only have one, so it's pretty easy. Uh, you can have it send an email to um, your whatever email you want to confirm that everything's backed up. You can have it set to always email you or just email you on failure. And uh, you can set a compression level. So I would just stick to the default. Um, this is fast and good. Don't know why you wouldn't want fast and good. Um, yeah, so the mode snapshot, suspend, and stop. They go over it on the on the um, on Proxmox. They have a uh, what's the difference between all these? I just have mine set to snapshot, but yeah. So that's pretty much all you need. You can click create, and then you can click on it and just run it now if you want. So what it's going to do is it's going to run. You'll see over here it gives a little symbol for um, back blah, 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 that is backing up. So. Yeah, it's locked. You can't make any changes to it. And finished already. And now we're done. So yeah, now that's backed up and ready to go. Are you saying he's got a face for radio? That epic beard, though. The beard is pretty... Looking, looking real salt and pepper these days. A lot more salt than pepper. I might need to uh, reach out to Just For Men, see if they'll sponsor me. Or uh, what's the other one? Manscaped. How do I get a Manscaped sponsorship? Everybody has one of those. 
Got to find out how many subs I need to get a Manscaped sponsorship. Okay, okay, I'm here. Sorry I'm late. Uh, you can start the stream now from the top. Okay, uh, DJ Fuba. All right, we're starting it over from the beginning, which pretty much we haven't done much. So honestly, you haven't missed a lot. I've kind of just been messing around, setting up random stuff in Proxmox. We set up a, uh, a Samba share. We talked about the script that I have running that's backing up um, configurations and directories for Proxmox so that when we try to restore it, um, we should have everything we need. But yeah, we haven't really honestly done much. Uh, At some point, uh, you had an SMTP... Uh, server configured so Proxmox can send emails, right? Or does it have some specific servers for that? Um, so you can go in and specify a... Oh, how does it do it? I have it set up on my production one. I wonder if I have it saved. Let me see. Proxmox email setup. So this is the guide I followed to get everything set up. Um, it uses a pretty basic configuration file for, uh, for, um, so I have it running with Gmail, so there's a way you can do it with Gmail. I'm sure there's a lot of different options for getting it set up, um, for basic SMTP stuff, but yeah, this is the guide I used. I guess I'll just throw this down there in case anybody cares. I don't know if they made changes in Proxmox 7 or not with some type of default SMTP stuff, but um, I've had this running since 6, and it's worked. So if you want to use that, feel free. But, uh, oh wait, what are you... Oh, this is the YouTube chat. Uh, their products are crap, though. Uh, they pretty much cut you. What did what did we? What's crap? What did I miss? But, uh, they're pretty pretty much cut you the coin purse for how much they cost. What did I miss? What what products are crap? Please turn on dark mode and and. Proxmox. I refuse. Oh, Manscaped. Okay. Yeah, I've never I've never used Manscaped. I just see everybody is sponsored by them. So uh there uh there's one called PVE Discord PVE Discord Dark Theme. So I, I use Dark Theme for most everything, but I like for some reason I like light mode and Proxmox. I don't know why. I'm I'm mostly a dark mode kind of guy, but for some reason light mode in Proxmox just just does it for me. Um, okay, so we have it backed up. Um, we have our let's see, we have our script, our script backed up, all of our files. We have our container backed up. Now, obviously, you wouldn't have just one. You might have just one, but uh, you'll probably have a lot of containers and VMs to back up. The process is the same for all of them. Um, it's pretty easy. I, I really like, again, like I said, I really like how Proxmox implements it. You can just go into backups here and click on backups, and it'll show you a list of all of the backups for VMs and containers you have. And you can see here's one. It goes... Um, VZ dump, and then if it's a VM or a LXC, uh, the ID number, and then the timestamp. And you can literally just click this and click restore. And it'll ask you what storage you want to restore it to, which is pretty cool. So um, if you're restoring this and you don't have the same storage as before, that's okay. You can just pick brand new storage to restore it from. Um, give it a brand new ID and just let it do its thing. So really easy. You can even clone. You can use this to clone um, one that's already running and have a complete new copy. 
uh, just restoring from a previous backup it's pretty cool so um and i know that's not unique to proxmox i know you can do it in almost every hypervisor i just like their implementation of it so all right is this the point where we blow it up How, what's the best way to blow up proxmox should we do like a, a rm should we just try to remove the root directory who who what's the best way to blow it up not using dynamite i don't want to physically blow it up Uh, there's a script you can use from uh, GitHub, but Radal doesn't have it installed. Yeah, I do not. RM, uh, RFETC PVE. So just start going down the list and, and blowing things up. All right. I mean, I feel like when I, when I remove the first one, it's going to crash. But all right, here we go. Let me wait. We have everything we need, right? Just the configuration files and our backups. That should be all we need. RM, RF, ETC, PVE. Permission denied. How dare you? It's not even going to let me do that. Uh, what about just... What if I just try to remove everything here? Oh, did we kill it? All right, we killed it. We can't get back in. Oh no, I accidentally deleted something and I can't get back into Proxmox. Oh no, oh shit, oh shit. Damn, I... I can't believe that happened. Oh, good thing I have my shit backed up. So, I guess one way you could go about it is to just actually remove the drive and access the file system and copy stuff over. But I'm just going to boot a new instance of Proxmox because that takes like five minutes. And uh, we'll go from there. So, is this Proxmox? No, this is this is Proxmox. So what we're gonna do? Let me um, let me configure. Actually, yeah, whatever. We're just gonna boot from here. Shut you down. And let's see, do we have, okay. This might flash for a second. I got to, uh, I got to change inputs. I don't know what you guys are seeing right now, but let me just boot from my USB disc right quick. Okay. All right, what are you guys looking at? Let's see. Oh, y'all see a blank screen. That's lovely, right? Um, okay, you guys can can look at my face in the meantime cuz I don't feel like hooking up the the uh the display capture for like 2 minutes worth of installing Proxmox. Uh, can we? I don't have IPMI. I wish I had IPMI on this, but I don't. It, I, it's honestly just installing. There's really not. There's not going to be much to this. I mean, I can show you what installing Proxmox looks like if you really want to see it. Uh, I have to plug it into my capture card, which 
is this guy, which is going over here, which is right here. So if I do this, theoretically, theoretically, if I do that, Wait. Wait, what? Aha. Okay. So, yeah. Voila. So, yeah, this is Proxmox. It's real exciting. Um, let me know in chat if you read that uh, EULA. If you didn't, you're going to jail. So I don't know what to tell you. Uh, here you can select your hard disk. Now I think um, you can select different file systems if you want. You can do a RAID configuration here, which is really cool. So when you're installing Proxmox, um, if you have like two SSDs, you can install, um, you can set up like a software RAID to your boot drive so that in the event one fails, uh, you have a secondary drive, or you can do different types of RAID. You don't have to do a RAID 1. You can do RAID 0 for ultra mega speeds. But, um, yeah, a whole bunch of cool stuff you can do. But I stick to the basics. EXT4, and just let it do its thing. So, uh, next, we are in Chicago. Time zone? Password. Bet y'all can't guess what my password is. And email. Um, can't remember what exact. Uh, enter a valid email address here. Your Proxmox VA server will send important uh, alert notifications to its email account, such as backup failures. So here's where, by default, this is where uh, failure notifications will get sent too. So I don't know if there's some like default SMTP thing set up. I'm not putting my real email address in there. I almost did. She, um, taco sauce at AOL.com. That's me. Too many mice and keyboard laying around. Uh, we'll call it same thing as before. Backup boy. I think all this will get overwritten anyway. Next. Sure. And let it do its thing. All right. Uh, do, 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 do. Yeah, that's how you install dark mode. You unplug the monitor. Ultra hard mode level dark mode. Hmm. <laughs> the paper clip. Hey, it seems like you just blew up Proxmox. You need a hand question mark? It's like, uh, it's like, uh, how Microsoft just acquired Activision. So everyone's like memeing about they want a, a full Super Smash Brothers with like where you can play as like a Call of Duty soldier and fight against Clippy, which would be freaking hilarious. Imagine using Clippy as a playable character in a fighting game. That'd be low key lit. Um, Fizz. Fission King, Fission King, uh, for the first time home server build, do you recommend uh, ITX or ATX build? It honestly depends on your physical store or where you can physically put it. Um, ATX, if you have the space, definitely go with ATX. It'll give you uh, much more room for more hard drives. Motherboards are genuinely are generally cheaper. Um, in the ATX form factor for the lower level chipsets. Uh, when you get ITX boards, you usually have to pay a premium. Um, 
for that small compact form factor. So uh, yeah, I mean, ATX, if you have the space, but I mean, I did a video where we put everything in a really tiny case. So I always read EULAs and send firstborn to the vendor. Yeah, I've had a lot of firstborns that have gone the way of uh, EULAs. Scratch says one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nope. Uh, Brandon Ballard says password with all the, the fancy modifications. Raid owls. Post fix. Nope, it's literally just password. Tricked you guys. Now you know my password. You can come hack my bank account. Up, oh, Sherry. Sherry back in the chat. Young man. Uh, you can use password Semper Fi Devil Dog Knuckle Dragger and one hell of a door kicker. Try that one, young man. That is a long password. I don't know if I would remember that. TVJ, welcome. TVJ has joined the chat. What is up? What is up? Uh, does PV backup attempt to back up the storage data or just the configs? Uh, containers and VMs. Does PV backup attempt to back up the storage data or just the configs? No, it backs up the storage that's used um, passed through to the VM. So when you assign it a virtual disk, uh, that is backed up as well. Uh, do you do what else? Uh, I use stacks of Intel NUX. Yeah. Dude, you can get some ridiculous little, uh, like, yeah. Nook level, nook sized uh, servers are legit. RG! Sup? Welcome. Welcome, welcome. Uh, yeah, I have a Pi 3B right now where I did a little practice on Open Media Vault, etc. Now building some cheap PC to expand and play uh, with Proxmox. Yeah, uh, it'll open you up to a lot more um, operating systems you can use just running an x86 based system over ARM. So, yeah, and there's no shortage of cheap server build configurations on the internet if you want some type of place to start i obviously have to plug my own video i have a budget home server build video that i think is a good starting point if you want to go that route but i i make it well known that i'll never be a snob for uh server hardware like i, I don't care if you're running you know a dual socket epic system with 128 cores and two terabytes of ram versus somebody who's running you know a old nuck or a raspberry pi that's sitting in the corner of their house i mean if it works for you then cool i mean not everybody needs a ridiculous system so uh late to the party did we blow up and restoring now yep we just blew it up and this is the reinstall so we are in we should be able to um get back into our system so let's check it out uh can i switch from this yeah okay what do you guys see now uh still that okay this all right let's okay we should be able to get back in this is a fresh fresh clean install and this is what it looked like when you first installed you have nothing so the first thing you want to do is get to our backup storage whether that's the usb or the um the nas that we switched it to or saved it to um, we have to get back to it. So let's do that. Uh, go in here, data center, storage, add, uh, SIFs. Uh, we called it backup. Let's just keep it the same, make things easy. Uh, server is this, uh, 
service. Uh, do to do, do I use? Can have you guys hacking me? Uh, so the shared should pop up. If we did this right. Uh oh. Was it 44 or 43? It's 43, wasn't it? There we go. Test backups is what I called it. Uh, content, remember, we have backup files in there. Uh, blah, blah, blah. This looks good. Add. If we go in here, look at that. Our container that we had before is... Just sitting there waiting to be restored just like that super convenient um, but that's not quite enough uh, we wanted everything else backed up so you can see in here like if we go in there's nothing I don't even think we have um, we don't have a Samba oh we do have a Samba is it enabled by default now uh, what is in Samba? Oh, cool. Huh. But obviously, we're not going to have our Samba shares in here. So that's gone. But now we get to try to restore everything from our... Um, Backups, our config backups. Uh, doo -doo. It also backs up mount points for a container. Yes, correct. Uh, guess who's back? Back again. Pro oh, God. Starkey. Starkey, you got to go to bed, my dude. You got you to go to bed. Uh, throw an OMV and a VM on Proxmox and Bob's your uncle. Yeah. OMV runs pretty great virtualized. I also run TrueNAS virtualized. Uh, on my production machine. So I have no problem with virtualizing the NAS system. Um, I run a i3-77 with 16 gigs of RAM. An i3-77... Uh, i3-77 hundred? Like the first, first gen? That's like old school. That's like just above core 2 and stuff. That's legit. Uh, did, how many VMs can you travel to? Oh my God. Oh, okay. How many VMs can you travel down? VM and a VM on a VM playing a VM. You can go there if you, if you en enable um, virtualization through your VMs, you can, you can go as deep as you want, but I assume things are going to get wonky the, the more levels you go down. Uh, I'm running six VMs on a Dell Optiplex. Uh, I got off the junk pile at work. Yeah, dude, like, I see so many old Dell machines on, like, Craigslist and uh, LetGo. It's not called LetGo anymore, whatever. Whatever it's called. For, like, $50 or something that are perfectly usable for a beginner home server. So if you live somewhere where... Um, there's people selling these things. Definitely recommend snagging like a fifty dollar machine if you're if you're looking to just get started. Now, some people want to build it and have like specific specs. Um, you may want more RAM or more hard drive space or more cores, but um, you you gotta start somewhere. So if you're just looking to get started and don't want to spend a lot of money, you can usually find a pretty cheap Optiplex or some kind of Dell or HP older desktop system um, locally for, I've, I've seen quite a few from 50 up to a hundred dollars. So yeah, Sherry, excuse me, young man, I have a question. I am 63 and fully, fully retired and disabled. I received my disability when I was 56 of age. Since then I have traumatic brain injury. Can you help? Let me know what you'd like help with and I will do my best to, to try. Um, I'd be interested in learning how to put a server into my garage. Thank you very much, young man. 
um yeah so putting a server in your garage assuming you have power in there assuming it doesn't get too hot um you're going to want to control temperatures you don't want your server sitting in a humid uh environment as well as a hot environment um networking you don't have to have wired uh internet out there if you can connect via wi-fi i don't recommend it for a lot of things but if if that's the only option then you know it's better than nothing um but yeah it's it's no different but i would just recommend if you're going in the garage i don't know what climate you live in but if you live in a cool climate like a a, a not humid one which is the opposite of where i live i live in texas so hosting something in the garage is not optimal for me but yeah, it'd be no different than running it in your house, assuming you have the correct uh, power run and networking available. So, yeah. Um, with my disability, I'm only able to use voice command and I'm unable to use the typing. That is interesting. I, uh, I have not, don't think I've come across or I, I don't have much experience at all with voice command and, and voice to text in terms of setting up servers. So that may be an interesting thing to look into. I know a lot of people obviously take that for granted because um, a lot of people have that ability. And but for those people who don't, um, it's, it's tough. So I, I really don't know the best way to go about that. So um, researching if people can find anything uh, in terms of the best voice to text um, softwares that will run in a very minimal environment that would be interesting to to learn about uh, you need to reapply after every update uh... <laughs> oh no meow is missing their user account hopefully we get it back um... yeah no we're not going to restore the tar files from the GUI it uh we got to go in and and do it in cli for sure uh sorry it's an i3 7100 cpu uh the i3 seventh gen that's were those still dual core did they up the i3s to four core and that no that's got to be a dual core right uh one of my servers is in uh, eepc atom 270 no vms on that though uh, uh, do, 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 do. FX68 says, I'm running VMware ESXi on an i7-8700. There you go. That is the, uh, that's the, like, OG, what do they call them, the i-series lineup. Uh, thinking of switching to Proxmox PVE, it might be better suited for the CPU. Maybe. Uh, Proxmox will not work on Wi-Fi. Uh, well, not. I've never. I've honestly never tried it. I have two hundred amps to my garage. That's certainly. That's certainly uh, enough power for sure. Uh, I would look at a uh, home assistant with Alexa integration for controlling things. Yeah, home assistant's really cool. I I honestly don't have enough. Um. <laughs> home automation stuff smart home stuff to set it up i always see cool home automation or uh home assistant projects i'm like yes i want to do that but i don't have enough smart home stuff in my house which is strange for me but maybe one day maybe one day but let's get back into trying to restore this i got sidetracked so we'll follow the directions he said here so basically you're just going to uncompress the uh, tar files and then copy them over. So it's pretty straightforward. So these are the commands to unzip it. So we'll go in um, to our location. So blah, 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 blah. Where did we store them? Uh, let's go ahead and do this and this. Nope, this, thank you. Uh, we'll go in here, we'll go into the shell, we'll say uh, CD, where was it? Mount, uh, PV backups, backup, backup, is that what we call it? Okay, so there it is, and we can say 
tar, uh, z, uh, xvf, proxmox. Yeah, I think we only have one, right? I can't work with this tiny little. We have two. Which one is it trying to pull? What is, whoa, hold on. What's going on here? Okay, whoops. All right, uh, tar, uh, e, what was it? Shit. I tried to work with the tiny screen and didn't work. ZXVF. Uh, then we're going to do Brox. Oh, the first, that one has two P's in it. Okay, I guess that's why I selected this one. Uh oh. Cannot open. No such file or directory error. It's not recoverable. Exiting now. Huh? Cannot open. No such file or directory. What are you talking about? What did I miss here? All I'm trying to do is un... Unzip it. Uh, we have to move them back before. Interesting. To restore, move the file back to Proxmox with copy or uh, SCP or whatever. Place it back into the var temp directory from where it came. Huh. I wonder why you have to do that. Oh, uh, you can't make the VM bridge work with Wi Fi. Interesting. I'd, I'd like to at least try it. Uh, Sonder uh, SC Vid says uh, DRML. I I have twenty plus years of HA experience, and I also and also with a friend that was in a similar situation. Feel free to reach out. And I can pass along some ideas. That'd be great. That's awesome. Thank you so much for for uh, for providing input and offering to help. That's awesome. Um, again, I have a Discord, so anybody that wants to hop in the Discord, uh, most people in there are very willing to help. Um, really chill, really chill environment. No, no Linux snobs in there. Um, Nobody's going to scoff at you if you just want to run a Windows server and like your GUI and don't want to use command line. So pretty sure I have a link in the uh, description of this uh, stream if you want to join the Discord. Discord, but yeah, so. All right. Um, yeah, let's uh, let's do what this guy says. So we're going to copy it over to what directory does he want to go to the var tmp directory? What's in there right now? Probably nothing. Wait, what? Oh, okay. Okay. So we have some random crap in there. Let's uh, copy it over. We'll do the copy this to uh, var tmp am i oh wait that's not the whole why did it not give me the whole nobody noticed that it didn't give me the whole uh the whole um file name I mean, we can copy it over. I don't see why we have to do that now, but I guess we will. 
Uh, so Proxmox, so I'm an idiot. I'm so stupid, and that's why it wasn't working. I'm so dumb. Anyway, we'll just copy it over to the local directory. So now it's there, and we can cd into TM key. Uh, see what's in there. Uh, yep, there it is right here. So then now we can run our command, which should have worked last time, but I'm an idiot and didn't finish the file name because I thought there was only one or the other one was different enough. Never mind. Uh, should work. Okay. So if we list again. Where did it, un oh, it unpacked it in this location. So now we can uh, CD into PVE or Proxmox. Wait, where is it? Var TMP, did it, did it actually? That's Whoops, I don't think I was supposed to move it and then uncompress it because now it's in var tmp var tmp in this folder. Uh, okay, but here's all of the subtars that were created and the way we need to handle that is Let's just put this over here. So what do you say? Unpack, uh, now unpack the tarred contents. If services are running, stop them. Uh, okay, I guess it wants to do that, but let's, uh, let's do that. Uh, XVF. So we have, um, what was it? Okay, whatever. Tar, XVF. I will do proxmox, uh, etc. Okay, where did it unpack these though? In another sublocation, I guess. Yep. Okay, in an etc folder. So now it's uncompressed, and we should just copy. All that over to this location. Okay, so yeah, this is what this guy is saying. It should be in the var temp var temp etc. So we did that right. Um, so what did he do? He did PVE etc and root. We have a couple more than that though. So we'll do um, uh, what did he do? Etc PVE. Run that one. We'll run the root one. Uh, what else? Do we need anything else? What other ones do we have? We have cron etc packages, PVE report, and root packages dot list it's not even a tar cron I mean see what happens when we do cron whatever YOLO oops oh they're all the same whenever all right so now we have every uh-oh. Oh, whoa, whoa wee. All right, we have everything ready to go. So let's start with ETC. Uh, Sherry says, thank you, everybody. I really appreciate it. I have to go now for dinner. I appreciate the help. Everybody have a great evening. You too, Sherry. I appreciate you stopping by. Uh, I know you were in here before. appreciate you uh, stopping by again. Have a uh, nice, delicious dinner. Um... Good luck, all gotta run all their obligations tonight. Saunder, uh, C. Vids, appreciate you stopping by. 
Uh, it was awesome having you in here. Appreciate it. Uh, have a good night. Uh, this is beginning to look complicated. A script that needs to be created where you add the variables of which backup you want to restore and it automatically finds the files uh, that are unpacked. I mean, it's not... Yeah, I mean, you can modify the script and, and have it how you want and tailor it how you want. Um, if I were really serious about it, I would doctor it and, you know, do what you're saying and create my own. But honestly, this isn't too bad. Copy this into your cron, let it run in the event you need a backup. Just uncompress. Obviously, I mean, it's a tar file. You're going to have to uncompress it anyway. So uncompress and then migrate it over. So in this event, you would do... Um, so we're already in the directory. So we can just say copy uh, etc. Do you need the leading... Nope, just etc to slash etc. Uh, R not specified. Do we need, uh, whoops, AVR. All right. I guess you do the same thing with uh, var and root. So, var. Same thing with root. Oh wait, we were supposed to stop the... Uh, I wonder if that... If they're... If the services are running. I don't think... I mean, we don't have anything... We'll see if it works. We'll see if it worked. If not, uh, we'll go back and try this. So now, I'm wondering, do we have to restart the server? I mean, theoretically, yeah, we probably would. Let's reboot, see what happens. Big Runts, what the hell is this? I love the energy this guy comes in with. <laughs> Open stream, what the hell is this? What are you doing? Um, yeah, restoring Proxmox. So we use this script to create a cron job, a daily cron job that just runs this script to um, back up all the necessary files needed to restore a basic uh, Proxmox um, instance. And we blew up Proxmox and now we are trying to restore from that. So we just ran all the steps, we rebooted, and if it worked, whenever it's back up, let's see. So, um, oh wait. So let's check our Samba share. Does our Samba share work now? If I go to, um, I know TC Samba SMB fig. Shit. Why didn't our Samba directory get backed up? I'm wondering if I needed to. I wonder if it didn't like it that I didn't stop the services when I was copying everything over. Because that's just part of ETC. That should have been backed up. Let me do that. Um, or I in. Is that actually a command you can run? The fuck? How does that even, this doesn't work, does it? I can't run this. Oh. <laughs> if we stopped the 
PV Damon. How? Are we back? No. Yeah, what? Like, can I still SS? <laughs> Wait, what? All right, hold on. Can I like... Okay, we're in. So I guess we're going to do this by... Uh, interesting. All right. Well, whatever. Let's try this now. Uh, redo our... Uh, where, where is this at? We were in, um, var, tmp, var, tmp, proxmox here, list. Okay, there's all of our stuff. Let's just rerun this crap. Uh, this is the PVE one. Wait, I already uns- I'm an idiot. I just wanted to copy. Okay. Copy ETC over. Copy. Uh, var over. Copy. Whatever. Just copy root over. Okay. I mean, it looks like it copied everything. So an ETC. An ETC, it only copied app. I thought it was going to do everything in ETC. It doesn't look like it copied. It only did like app armor. The host name. We should have changed it to see if the host name and everything got updated. Perl, our syslog configuration. So it looks like a lot of stuff is missing in ETC. I wonder. Oh, no. It goes. Oh, I'm an idiot. Okay, here we go. Okay, here, here's everything. So did it copy over Samba? SSL. Yes, I see you. Yes. Okay, it looks like it did freaking. Oh, no. Mm, no, why not? Why would it skip Samba? Interesting. Okay, well, let's restart the services. Do we have access to the GUI now? I don't, I don't. Okay. So we're back in the GUI. We don't have our Samba shares. We don't have any of our, our storage, right? No, we don't have any of that. Which is kind of disappointing. Maybe give it one more reboot to re... Um, no, after we restored the services, it should have done that, but we'll try it. Um, I 
Um, I think that services files uh, that are being used would be locked from the access, maybe. Uh, I have no experience in this. I just let my time machine back up and pray. Uh, Tim Graves got SSHN. Yeah, did that. Uh, Starshine 87. It's got no rhythm. <laughs> Wait, what's got no rhythm? What did I miss? ETC. It was ETC to slash ETC because I was already in the directory and I was just moving the ETC folder that was uncompressed to the root ETC directory of my um no i think i had it right let me look at the command again yeah so i'm copying the etc directory into the root etc directory right yeah because i was already in that location so everything that's in ETC is going to the ETC route and overriding. But we don't have, I was hoping we would have like Samba shares still. I was hoping we would have um, any of our other shares or any of our other storage uh, set back up, but I guess not. Um, our ZFS isn't here, but I assume if we just do what did shit? What was the name of our ZFS pool? Was it main ZFS? Shit, I don't remember. Z pool. Add main ZFS. Uh, what was what is it? Restore ZFS pool max. What's the command? Import. Not add. But that's just ZFS. That's not like... What was the name of it? I don't remember what I named my ZFS pool. Oh, I'm an idiot. Was it like... Give me a list of them? Oh, look. Oh, I just called it ZFS pool. I didn't know it would give me a name. That's cool. Is that really what I named it? No, there's no way. That's just a config. Oh, that is what I named it? Really? Uh, okay, well, we have our ZFS pool back. But I guess that's something. Uh, huh. So wait, are we just trying to back up the node? If that's the case, then there's a reason not to use uh, the Proxmox. You're writing... Oh, yeah, I got distracted. So wait, are we trying to back up the node? If that's the case, then is there a reason not to use the Proxmox built-in node backup? I thought you could only back up the node if you were using Proxmox backup server. Yeah, like I thought you had to be running Proxmox backup server to back up the entire node.
Yeah, what, in case of recovery, just restore your partition layout, restore LVM, create file system, unpack tar, install grub, reboot. So do we have? No, we don't have any. Hold on. What if I go, what's in mount now? Oh, uh, PPE. Nothing. I was hoping it would at least restore these mount points. I don't know where in the configuration it saves these uh, file systems that are created, but I assume those would be backed up. So when I restored it, I would have these mount points still available. Just kind of annoying. Yeah, I mean, they're not mounted. The ZFS one, the ZFS one's not even mounted. Well, I haven't configured it to be mounted, but. SDC has a file system on SDC one. So if I go here and go to like storage, add, CFS. Can I, I can call this uh, ZFS main ZFS. I don't like this. I should add it now to here and give it a mount point. But what mount point did it give it? Hello? Oh, it doesn't have one yet? Let's see. Why? Man, that's annoying. I thought it, by creating it, it would create a mount point in PVE, like the default location with the ID, like it normally does. Why didn't it do it? Or did we? We didn't have a default ZFS location before. We had EXT4 and our backup. So... Either way, it's annoying that it didn't, um, oh, Samba, get it, got no rhythm, I get it. Um, it's annoying that it didn't save all this, because that would be big if you have multiple configurations of file systems and stuff and Proxmox, and you wanted to, obviously, when you think you're restoring your system, you would think when I press the button, it at least is going to give me back some of my basic functionality like this, but um, you're writing an ETC directory in the ETC directory? Are you sure? Oh my god, really? Ha! Okay. So, yeah, that that uh yeah. Okay. That shouldn't be how it's done. Did you put those mounts into FSTAB? Now, I don't know how Proxmox handles 
uh, the default mounts when you create a, a storage device because it creates a mount to PV whatever the ID is. And I don't know if it manual or manual, if it automatically edits the F stab or not. Yeah, no, I'm not, I'm not stressed about it. I mean, obviously this is, yeah, this isn't my production server. This is whole, my streams are always learning experiences because I am not the smartest guy, obviously. Um, so I'm always going to run into issues. And if I'm running into issues, I'm sure other people are going to run into issues. So yeah, that's what we're, we're all going to learn something today. So it does look like when I copied over the stuff, I copied from var, the var directory into, or like, so I bet I have a var and a root in the same way. Watch, if I do var, I probably have a freaking var folder that looks very similar. Oh, there's not really much in here. S pool, cache, backups, mail, opt, run. Okay, I guess that stuff doesn't need to be restored. And the same thing in root, right? Root, root. Nothing, okay. So... I guess that's in fact what happened. So the command would then be instead it would be this just var into root. Or would you do this? No. So just be var into root or the top directory. Huh. Okay. So I guess let's try that. <clears throat> Next video idea. Ansible to restore Proxmox like a tech god. Yeah, Ansible would probably uh, handle this a lot better, considering it's uh, an automated process. Root, 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 root. Yeah. Stop services first. Yeah, I was, I was getting at that. All right, so let's stop the services again. What was the command? I have it in here somewhere. Uh, system stop. Okay. And now we're going to CD into the var temp var temp proxmox CP CP ETC to root. Oh wait, we need the was it A V R? Or is it right? What was it? A V R. Okay. Hello? You gonna run? That looks right. Uh VAR? root okay come on come on buddy I believe in you. I believe. OK. 
Come on. Uh oh. Uh oh. We may have killed it by restoring it. Uh oh. Someone's not in the middle, I promise. It's me. Alright, we're just gonna re we're gonna reboot the the official way. Meep. Where's the power button? Where's the heart? Found it. Investigate and schmestigate. When in doubt, hard reset. I don't know if the services. Um, I should have read the freaking. I thought the message was the same from last time, so I didn't read it like an idiot. I hear you doing something. Oh wait, I still have this plugged in. I hope it's not booting from my Proxmox. Uh, it may have tried that. I didn't even think about that. I mean, we can check. Failed to start import. Okay, I think it. Failed to start import ZFS pool, ZFS pool. Okay, why are you hung there though? I think I was doing something funky with the boot drive. Hold on. Here, I'll switch you guys over so you can see. Uh... Shut up. All right. Okay, that's right. That's what we want to see. Failed to start import ZFS pool with ZFS pool. Okay. Are you going to like do anything though? We don't need ZFS pool to. To to boot, what, what are you doing? We may have double killed it. Three logical volumes in volume group PVE now active. Okay, thank you. Like I cool. Like you didn't you failed to start ZFS pool. It doesn't matter. Just keep going. <laughs> I don't know what it's trying to do right now. Let's give it a give it a couple seconds. It's gonna hang there and then dump you into the rescue shell. Why though? It can't be just because it can't import a ZFS pool. Shh. 
surely that's not the case. Oh, oh yeah, here we go. Yep. Time got waiting for device UUID 6A33. Dependency failed for file system check on 6A33. Failed to start the cluster file system. Foxmox view firewall. Okay, we killed it. Again. <laughs> All right. Um, what did we do wrong? What did we do wrong? So, we initially copied over all of the etc var and root uh, files, but we did it in the wrong directory. So then when we did it in the correct directory, things didn't even restart and then it blew up. Yes, I know. You don't have to tell me twice. Thank you. Okay, so we definitely killed it. Yep. Um, all right, all right, okay. This might have been user error. Let's check. Let's redo this. <clears throat> Nothing works on the first try, right? Um, okay. All right. Uh, this man likes men. Uh, okay. Don't know what that has to do with uh, anything, but cool. Uh, that's not the question. It's what did we do right? Uh, this still makes a good uh, tutorial. You copy the old fstab with the boot and root partitions from the old system. You copied... The old F stab with the boot and root partitions from the old system. I'm sorry if I was blunt. I didn't mean to act. What did you do? You weren't blunt at all. I don't. You're good. Uh, install. Okay. So why would we even want to back up? the original but it should all be the same we didn't change drives the f stab shouldn't matter the, the drive ids shouldn't have changed Hmm. Okay. Let's, let's let's go through this again. Let's see what see what uh see what we messed up on. Uh, 
uh, back up to uh, back up boy. Is this what her name does not match? A f Wait, what did I? Oh, made it. We're not doing an email. All right. Partition UIDs are going to be different with a new install. Okay, so why I'll partition UUIDs? So why why are we copying the entire etc directory then? We shouldn't need. Huh. Let's look at, yeah, there's nothing more going on here. Let's, uh, it should just run through and install. Let's look at, um, We created the new user account just because I wanted a Samba user. Um, no other real reason. But so let me look at, uh, let me turn off this. So when this guy's saying to restore it, if nothing goes wrong, and you have separately restored the VMs using the default product. Yeah, you should be back to where you started. Uh huh. What the hell is this? That's not even, yeah, that doesn't exist anymore. We didn't skip anything. Yeah, I don't know about this one, homie. So, yeah, we can take it out. So if we go into, this should be up by now. Why are you not up by now? What did you do? Are you really not finished in style? Oh, wait. Uh, hello. What are you? Uh, what are you doing? There we go. All right, so let's do this again. Data center. You would. Like, you would think you would just be able to, like, why Proxmox doesn't include just, like, a backup, backup a node. Very strange, very strange. 
Um, but okay. Let's, uh, what was I doing? Storage, add, sifts, backup. Uh, test backups. I think we use this for these two, right? Got my backup servers down. I wish I could show you. Oh, it's not down. So I'm pretty sure I have a drive failing on my backup server. Frick. Oh, it is down. I think. Now we're in. Okay. No, we're up. We're up and running. Backup. Storage backup is not online. What do you mean it's not online? Did I type this wrong? Apparently, if the password is wrong, it just says it's not online. That's a terrible uh, error message. Uh, when you get back around, can you take a look at data center backup area and poke around there? Yeah, in data center backup, I believe that backs up the nodes, but I'm not sure about the config for the data center itself. I would guess you'd get data center backup, add your backup storage, and restore the node from there. So when you go to data center and backup, you can only back up VMs. Like, unless I'm missing something. There's no... There's no way to back up the actual node. Kyle X, welcome. Good evening. We're we're failing hard at trying to get this restored. Yeah, I don't think there's a way to like just straight up back up the node, which is really annoying. Um, but okay, we're back in here. So we get to run all of our commands again. So how did we do this before? We went to uh see mount pd backups there's our backups uh we copy that from here to temp cd into there we uh do the un un uncompression uh what is it that's zxvf And then we cd into var town proxmox. We have all these, and then we did same thing kind of xvf. Xvf uh, proxmox pv does all the var stuff. Fox Mox ETC is that one? Yeah. 
and then root. So if I go into ETC now, and we look at the F stab, UUID three eight two six six A three three compared to yeah, new UUID. So we don't want the F stab, but we should want everything else, right? Just got here in time, I see. Yes, you did, Tim. Oh my God. <laughs> I didn't realize, uh, I was freaking on black screen the whole time. Okay, so all I did was un <laughs> uncompress the files. Uh, yeah, we figured out before that I, I copied uh, etc to the wrong directory. I copied etc into a etc etc directory, which was an issue. But one issue was that I copied the f stab, which had a boot partition with a new uh, ID, UUID, and that didn't exist on the new system. So so I think we just need to get rid of the fstab folder before we copy it over. I think. It's worth a shot. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll say uh, we're in the ETC right now. We can remove um, F stab. So F stab should be removed now. Okay. That should. I don't know if there's other shit that's going to break it though. Sorry, stepped away for a few minutes and realized that while I was thinking about your problem, I guess I should have checked. Now oh, you're good. You're good. Um, okay, so I guess we can try again. So let's run the stop command. If this doesn't work, then I'm going to do away with this script that this guy made because, first of all, this is wrong. Um, second of all, it doesn't work is most important if if this doesn't work well second of all the f stab shouldn't be copied back over unless i'm just missing something here are you really gonna oh my God. why are you doing this again How do I clear the freaking, I guess I should read it. Add the correct key in the known host to get rid of this message. Can I just delete the keys? SSH known hosts. Add the correct. SSH known hosts. Is that just on? Okay, so can I just go into uh, the hell is this? 
Can I just delete this from the known hosts file? All right, whatever. Let's break more shit. Who cares? Can I not do that? <laughs> Shh. <laughs> okay. All right, now we can copy this shit over. Uh, where was the CD? Var. Uh, var temp. Var temp. Prox, mox, list. Here's our shit. Uh, copy, AVR, um, etc to root. Copy, AVR, um, var to root. AVR root. To root. I think I'm just going to reboot from here. Let it do its thing. See what happens. All right, now we're going to switch over and see what happens when we boot. While we're booting. Uh, I've been two hours. I'm stepping, sleeping now. Call me if needed. I look forward to the rest of the stream. Hey, man, I appreciate you hanging out this entire time, Starkey. Um, hopefully, if you rewatch the stream, we have some some good news. But uh, not looking too promising. But you know what? That's what this is for. So if it doesn't work, we'll try something else next time. Night, man. Enjoy. Enjoy your slumber. Uh, Benjamin Carlson, yeah, blow it up, yeah. Just delete the known house. Recreated. Looks good. Uh, what is going on? Why... Why are we getting nothing here? The black screen should be what's showing on the output of the video or the server, so we should have some type of debug messages i don't know i don't know what's going on here hold on let me let me switch it over here no signal oh wait it's up okay why is it not showing on my stream though is that the toggle it? what's going on weird Okay, so it says it's up and running, but it's not. Uh, uh, So I'm seeing a login. Oh wait, this is the wrong, wait. I think this is right, hold on. I don't know why we can't see anything on the stream. This is the input. Let me unplug it and plug it back in. Oh, there we go. Okay, so... Oh shit, okay, there's our ZFS pool. Uh, what's in mount? 
TV. There's our backups and our EXT4. Okay, but why? Why is the GUI not working? Um, no, the IP uh, didn't change. PVE proxy failed to start up. I, I didn't see any error messages. Do I literally have to like start? I should start all that by default. Why would I oh, this shit again? That was annoying as hell. So like, what if I try to start it now? All right, got too many keyboards in front of me. Oh, Jesus. Uh, uh huh. Fucking move. Um, what? Why would that doesn't make any sense? So if I just start it, like Why are you being like this? Yeah, like it doesn't. Huh? Why would this just not exist anymore? Unit PV proxy service not found. I'll see what happens again. Screw it. Doop, doop, do doop. Oh, cluster needs to be started. Fix broken. Maybe that, maybe that's what we need to run. Okay. So Notice I forgot to edit the host file to loop back to my IP. Is 
The IP never changed. Uh, yeah, Alex, right? Yeah. Okay. So what happened here? What was this guy saying to do? Failed to start the Proxmox BE cluster file system. I wonder if there was another... <sighs> Install fix broken. I mean, it's not like it's broken. It just... Failed to start the Proxmox virtual environment cluster file system. Huh. That's not good. I assume we can't just start it now. It's going to give us the same error. I assume it had something to do like before we copied over a file that shouldn't have been copied over. What was it? Failed to start the Proxmox to be a Jesus Christ, I'm freaking on the So this is what we're getting. Oh, Jesus. Failed to start the V cluster file system. I think that var restore screwed you it posted your old cluster files into your new system and you can't rejoin that cluster from a restore like that. Yeah, I don't understand. So I think... Yeah, I don't think this, res this script is the way because you can't just restore everything. Certain things are recreated on a new install. And so I'll show you the one that this one was more popular than the one I'm using for uh, my production machine. So in my production machine, I run this maybe. There's no, that's wait. Yeah, like this is the one. So this is the run one I run on my production machine. It's way more straightforward. It only copies over these things. And then um then you can restore just these so i'm thinking 
I might go back to this one. Which is essentially the same thing, but with just these. So let's try one more time. One more time, we're going to install again and just restore these necessary uh, configurations and see if that works better. Whoa, 25 bucks. Jorgen Phillips, $25. Uh, hey, I found your channel a little while ago and your content video quality is amazing. Keep it up. Uh, thank you so much. <laughs> I am shocked uh, with how this stream is going that someone popped in and wanted to give me 25 bucks, but I sincerely appreciate that, man. I'm glad you uh, found the channel. I'm glad you find it interesting and entertaining. So awesome. I, I sincerely appreciate that, man. And hopefully uh, we can get this uh, restoration completed uh, tonight. I'll give it. I'll give it one more try, one more reboot, and if that doesn't work, I'll do research on my own and come back with a working solution so that we're not going to waste another freaking three hours. But again, like I said at the beginning of the stream, my streams aren't always perfect. They are me trying things as I would normally just live on camera so um none of this was planned before now okay let's do one more uh configure or one more reinstall and only copy over these specific uh files from the restoration so no var shit no root stuff just the necessary things we need let's try that this time. Okay. Uh, let me change it to this. Let me change it to this. All right, let's boot in to here for yes. Okay, I hope you guys can see everything this time. Let me check. I don't have my Streamlabs pulled up. Uh, right now, obviously, there's nothing. Okay, there we go. Or do this boot from a Clonezilla live CD and clone. Uh, the HDD backup share, do reverse to restore. <gasps> no, I'm getting this done. The easy way. <laughs> easy way. Uh, yeah, this was great. We all learned something from this. Failures can be better than successes at times. I agree with that statement sometimes. Uh, yeah, when things just go smoothly and you're copy and pasting uh, commands and scripts, and it all works, you don't really learn anything, right? You just learned that a script that you copied from the internet did something. But when it fails and you actually have to look at what the shit you're doing and what those commands are, then you actually learn things. So I do agree with that statement. Uh, when I had to upgrade uh, Proxmox Major versions, I r synced the Proxmox VM uh, config directory to the new version. Uh, but I didn't care about any other config from the servers, just the VM. Yeah, the VMs and uh, containers are really easy to back up and restore. Why they don't make the host easy to back up and restore is... I, I can't fathom why. But I assume it's it's not too difficult once you know how to do it. We're just in the boat that we don't know how to do it yet. And what files are necessary and what files need to stay away. So I think that's what we're figuring out now. Okay. 
Okay, it's going to be back up to uh, the local boy. Next. Okay. Let's get our install on and see if this works. Install PBS side by side with PVE. I know a lot of people do that. Um, I've heard about doing that, running um, Proxmox backup server as a virtual machine inside of Proxmox so that you can backup the Proxmox backup server as a VM. And when you restore a new server, you just have to restore that VM of your Proxmox backup server and then restore your host from that. Is I, I assume that's how it works, which doesn't sound like a terrible idea, but again, it shouldn't be that complicated. But again, I, I mean, I'm not, there's people way smarter than me working over at the, the team that handles Proxmox. So there's gotta be a reason why they haven't implemented it yet. Yeah, no, I agree with you guys. Like, for the most part, if my server blew up, my Proxmox server blew up, all of my backups and everything are um, saved on my backups. All, all my uh, virtual machines and containers and stuff are saved on uh, my backup server. So I would be able to get all of that back, but it would just be really nice if... All my configurations, my networking, um, um, just all the settings and minor things that you tweak over the course of using your server for a while, that when you restore it and you, you forget all those little things that you changed, um, it'd be nice to just not have to worry about that and have those uh, restored automatically. But yeah, no, for the most part, as long as you're backing up your your VMs and your containers, then you're, you're probably going to be good. But again, I'm, I'm running the backup for the configuration. So I figured I'd try this so that when something inevitably happens with one of my servers and I do have to do this for real, I'm not doing this at like one in the morning and cursing my own existence because I've done it before and I've figured out, you know, what's the right way to do it. Yeah, that's what it sounds like the Proxmox folks recommend, which, I mean, if they recommend it, it obviously works, but you would think there would be a better way to do it, considering how easy they made backing up VMs and containers. So, very, very strange. All right, third time's a charm, right? We got six minutes before the three hour mark. So I wanna, I wanna get this, I wanna get this knocked out. Let's see if anybody subscribed to my other channel. Whoa, 19 subs, let's go. Woo! I remember having 19 subs on Raid Owl. All right, let's change this back. Shouldn't need this anymore. Oh, it's like Inception. Okay, here we go. So this time we are only going to do these specific ones. Okay, I feel like I've done this before a couple of times, but here we go again. Here we go again. Okay, I'm nervous for a second. It's like this is a fresh install. 
Should be good. All right, first step, get to our uh, Samba share. Back up. No. Test backups. All right. So through all this, we still have our container backup. That part's easy. All right. Let's do this all over again. Uh, shell, let's go back in. CD, var, temp. Nope, not there. CD, mount. PV backup, um, copy, proxmox backup. We probably don't need to do this, but whatever. Uh, two bar temp. Okay. Uh, go back into var temp and uncompress it. Just tar. Still don't remember the command. X something next fee. ZXVF. ZXVF. Jesus Christ. Okay. Am I stupid? I put a oh, Jesus. Oh, okay. Uh, now I can CD into here, into here, into here. Here's all of our subtars. Uh, we only want the EXT one now, so let's unzip that one. Tar. Uh, this one only used. I don't know what the attribute or the parameters are. Was it just XVF or no Z? ZVF. Uh, Proxmox, we want the ETC version. Am I stupid? XVF, I literally read it and read the wrong letter. Okay. So there's our ETC. So this time, this time, we only want So first we're going to do the PVE folder. So let's do that. ETC PVE. Let's move that over. Actually, let's kill let's kill all the services cuz don't want anything running while we're doing this. Might work without it, but let's just Kill everything. Uh, okay. Um, CD into var temp var temp prox mox. Okay, there's our ETC folder. So the first thing we want is, oof, I'm way behind and hold on. Oh, they do not recommend it. Installing the backup server directly on the hypervisor is not recommended should the hypervisor server fail. Wait, installing the backup server directly on the hypervisor is not recommended. Should the hypervisor server fail, you can still access the backups. It seems 
whatever. Okay. At this point, just R sync root to your backup NAS. Yeah, I mean, well, essentially, that's what we were trying to do with the first, um, the first, uh, the first script kind of takes everything out, packages it, and then puts it back in, but it doesn't like that. Um, you could just, yeah, rsync everything out maybe and, and like actually clone a drive might work. You still can if you set it, oh, you still can if you set it up on a different server. Right, and that's what I was, I'm, I was thinking like, but what you could do is run it as a VM and back it up to a NAS. And then if your Proxmox server fails, you know, you reboot it with whatever, with a new install and then restore the, uh, the backup server from your NAS. And then you can restore from that, which I guess what people do. I sounds jank, but I mean, whatever. All right, anyway, let's try this. Let's try this. I'm getting, getting carried away. All right, um, which ones are we doing? We're doing ETC PVE. So we are going to copy. We are, go we are going to copy uh, ETC PVE to ETC. Oh, we're gonna do the overwrite shit. AVR I'm an idiot Okay That looks correct Now let's do ETC LVM Okay, ETC mod probe D. Okay, we're gonna do ETC network interfaces. Interfaces to ETC network oh that's just a okay cool uh then we will do etc uh vz dump dot comp to etc right yes okay uh same thing with sister or sysctl dot comp Okay. Oh, shit. Where are we at? Where are we at? We did the CTL resolve. Resolve.com. Whatever the hell this is. KSM tuned. Hosts, host name cron. Uh, 
posts. Post name. Right. Okay. How does this work? So cron, I wonder if it just, if that works, if that syntax works. Yep, apparently, cool. Uh, aliases. And then we should be done. That should be it. I mean, I'm just going to reboot it and let it do its thing. What, uh, what do we think is going to happen? Odds. Odds it works. I give it. I give it a 60% a chance of working. Let's see what's going on. Oh. Great. Oh, wait. I saw a lot of errors. Saw a lot of errors. Didn't look great, TBH. But, uh, let's see. Moment of truth. Okay, that didn't, that didn't work. Uh, okay. Same thing. How's it? Oh, so bitch. What's the? What did I do? There we go. Oh, I thought that was going to work. Run the restart service. I mean, it, it should try to start the services on, on boot. I mean, this shouldn't do anything. It's going to try to start things, but... So what does this guy say then? 
I mean, we restored exactly what exactly what he said. Did we miss something? Did I not copy it right? Like, LVM. Mod perb D or PVE LVM Mod perb D what the hell are you doing? How's this? What's this? I mean, it all looks correct, right? F stab issue, maybe, but we didn't copy over the F stab, right? I went back. It's not finding the ZFS cluster file system, which shouldn't. Could it be some sort of crazy permissions issue. I don't think so. It's not finding the ZFS cluster file system. That shouldn't. Copy F. so we tried copying F stab last time, but it didn't like it because the U the UUID was different and that was causing an issue. So
<sighs> so everything in PV was backed up. Everything in LVM was backed up. Everything in Mod Probe D. The network interfaces file. Did I? I mean, okay, let me try this again. So what happens when I ran? So when I was in here, I ran this, with, no, this, which essentially says take the PVE folder and drop it in here, which is correct, right? Yes. Yeah, I mean, this, this should be correct. And I ran... This. Okay. That seems correct. It's weird that I didn't delete anything. But okay. That's not right. Run that. Okay, that looks normal. Network interfaces, copy to network. Yep, that's right. That's right. Hosts and host name. And all this is right, so... Maybe I shouldn't have stopped things when I did it? Like, I don't, I don't know. That wouldn't make any sense, though. No, none of these. Let me get a look at the thing again. Storage of CFGs might have the old ZFS pool in it, and the new system doesn't have it associated yet. All right, I'm gonna watch closely. Let's see. It doesn't, are we? Ah. Oh. Poopy man, thanks for following on Twitch. Welcome to this miserable attempt to restore Fox Mox. Storage. 
CFG might have the old ZFS pool info in it and the new system doesn't have it associated yet. Why the hell would that like? So, I mean, wait. Oh, never mind. Okay. So, so freaking weird. Like, why? I thought I could see the. I thought I could see the errors with D message, but I guess not. Wait, can I really not? Can me? What's the? Oh god, I don't feel like looking all this shit up right now. Uh, you can kill Prox, Prox, but Unreal. Oh my god, Wes is here. Oh my god. The Unraid shill himself has showed up just in time to rub in my Prox Mox restoration woes. Uh, journal CTL XE. What? Okay, so our Lord and Savior on red. Uh, wait, is that like a comment journal? Oh, wait. Is that like a fucking journal CTL XE? I mean, yeah, this is the same. What? I mean, I'll just double check. Okay, yeah. I mean, I, oh shit. I didn't realize there was more. Uh... Wait, why are there so many? Okay, failed to start a ZFS pool. That shouldn't. That shouldn't blow up the freaking system.
file exists. Use mount point is not empty. Starting the Proxmox PVE cluster file system. PMX CFS. Use mount point is not empty. Okay, that's something. System CTL stop PV cluster. It's not empty, right? But what is it expecting to be empty? What mount point? You, I guess. Uh, that is okay so you're saying I need to system CTL stop the PV cluster then PMX CFS L to clear out the weird ETC PVE mount. Then reboot. I mean, did we already freaking bork it? Like... So, uh, what is it in right now? Backups there, but not the EXT4 one, which makes sense, I guess. But copy the files before reboot, right. So do we have to reinstall and do this again, or can I salvage what, what is here? All right, yeah, go do your thing, man. Um, so I'm trying to think of what, what does that command even do? What does PMXCFS do? So you have to stop. Got it. So you stop. Sean Campbell finally able to catch a live stream. What up? Welcome. It's it's going great. It's going terrific. But PV cluster is not even running. Like wait, it was running? 
now. All right, last try. Now what I wanted to do. Remove VGC PV, then, oh, well, all right, let me boot in. I'll just boot into try that before I reinstall again. You're making me want to kill my Proxmox server and try to fix it. Dude, this is why I did it on a system that doesn't matter at all. Okay, so it's going to fail. Okay, yep. Yep, yep, got it, thanks. Okay. So you're saying to kill everything in ETC PV Then you're saying to run the PMX CFS L. There's nothing in there. I wonder if I can make a Proxmox VM on my Proxmox server to kill. Technically, yeah. I don't know what this command does. If you're sure this is safe, use the non-empty mount option. Proxmox. Uh, so just blow up the entire folder. Okay. So what is it? Where does that get us? We've successfully <clears throat> done that. But now... Now what? It mounts the cluster file system dev fuse to etc pve. Okay, so now that that's gone, again, what do we do? Do we is do we copy over something we shouldn't have? Now you can start the cluster service. With nothing in PVE. Yeah. Uh, it's a new one. Unable to acquire PMX CFS lock.
But don't you have to recopy the files first? Yeah, that's what I would have assumed, but... I mean, the service has stopped. But apparently we copied over something we shouldn't have before, because... Unmount dev fuse, all right. Okay, well, it ran. Again, where does that get us? Because now we have nothing in PVE. Are we supposed to start? I mean, it's it's running, but we're, again, we're, what does that mean? I mean, I'm in Proxmox, but it, there's nothing here because there's nothing in the PVE folder. So... Now... I mean, the system started, but it doesn't matter because there's nothing... Now you should be able to reboot it and it should get back to the web GUI. Yeah, but we didn't, we, we removed everything we restored. So if I reboot, everything we copied over from PVE is, is going to be gone. Okay, that's fine. Um, all right. I mean, we're in, but we don't have, anything from the PVE folder. Which contains, like, everything we need. Not everything, but... A lot of the configurations. So we have like this, this, the network interfaces, all this stuff, but we don't have this stuff now. With the cluster mount now turned on, you can copy the files from your backup to the proper and the changes won't break your system because when I stopped it, it unmounted that file system. So when I copied over, it wasn't actually copying to, the mount was broken. So I was copying over to it locally, but it wasn't copying to the actual mount. 
on the dev directory. So when I rebooted, there it was still looking for it still had the old file system there it still had the old versions there but the new versions that's confusing okay well, let's try it okay get... all right um So stopping the services, I said, oh, let's stop them because uh, it's probably, it doesn't say to do it, but it's probably for the best. And I was wrong. Okay, so if I do this all over again, and we just want to copy um etc not that etc pve to etc so rerunning this did you run what are you doing? Why won't you run? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Cannot create a regular file. Permission denied, permission denied. Wait, what? I mean, I'm already root, so... Wait, do you actually need to... I shouldn't have to do this, because root's in the... Yeah. What? No. Pseudo's not in Proxmox. Um, it looks like some things copied over, but like, like for these storages, Operation not permitted, not permitted, not permitted. Did you stop the services before the copy? Uh, no, because that's what killed it last time.
don't care when this isn't. Uh, I need to be able, I need to whiteboard all of this. Well, you got most of the things you needed, so that's good. I'd say you'd run, I guess, ch own r root root etc pve just to be safe. Hey, I actually got the link. Uh, to the source of that script. I don't know why it didn't come in uh, Your browser is there a way to post it to you? Source of what script? Uh, you can post it in the discord if you joined the discord I just don't understand why I can try that. I don't see why that wouldn't make any sense. I think I'm just going to. <laughs> okay. Assume it doesn't have anything to do with Wait, what? There's EXT four. There's ZFS pool. They're not mount they're here, but they're not. Ah, damn, now I'm confused. So there's I'm so confused. So I copied the container over. I can't imagine I can okay, hold on. EXT4 is here, but it's not mounted or anything. If I go to storage, it has a mount point, but um, let's just see what's in here. Okay. I don't think I had anything in there, to be honest. 
can I, what happens if I, uh, Maybe we reboot and re re uh, reinitializes some shit. I could have ran them. Oh, well, I guess I could have mounted them manual, but it was mounted, so that's weird. I stepped away for a moment. Was it really an issue with the permissions? I came back as you No, uh, it wasn't our permissions issue. Well, we don't know if it's fixed, but... Um... Yes, yeah, not mounting... <laughs> it's being weird with... With these. It had no problem restoring this. It didn't like this. Because maybe... Yeah, so there's no... It's looking for a, a ZFS pool that doesn't exist yet. And it's looking for... This directory mount, I guess, that doesn't exist yet. But if we look at these disks, there was ZFS, a ZFS, and the ext4 partition. So I bet if I wonder if I go into here and do. Of F. It's not ZFS. What was it? Is that not the command? Am I brain farting right now? Am I seriously? Is it zpool? Am I dumb? Zpool import. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. I know zpool. Now. A. How do we get this dude back, though? So it's not mounted. The file system's still there. It's just not mounted. So I'm wondering if I just delete this. Like, just recreate it. Wait.
I gotta be missing something. Yeah, but do I have to, if I mount it? It's weird that it sees it, and it, I guess it just recognizes it in Proxmox from the configs that there should be something there. But the mount points didn't come over, I guess, because you're not copying over the F stab. So you just have to remount it. But I'm wondering. I'm trying to think of the best way to do it, like through the GUI, like to where I would. So I do this. I do have disks unused, you're lying, but okay, no, I guess I don't want to do that. I want to see if you can, it'll mount it by creating it in here. So if I create a directory in here and I say it's ext4 and I say the directory is this. I don't know, maybe we want everything in here. Actually, whatever, just disk image. That's not right. 60 gigs. Now, that's because it's so confusing. No, this isn't right. So if I do do it like that, Uh, okay, so where do I get back to where it knows I had a directory created? Or did I already bork that attempt when I deleted it from here? unless I just do the same thing. That doesn't make sense. I mean, that worked. Did it add it to the F stab though? I mean, I'd, I'd have to do that, right? So I'm converting my server 
2016 file server to true NAS. So I just skip. So I just skip the Proxmox true NAS core and go to true NAS scale. You can. I mean, scale is Debian based. It's a lot more uh, new age than core. Uh, it's still not. It's still in beta, technically, but it's a pretty stable beta. But um, just know that it is still in beta. So they are doing updates and there are bugs. But yeah, I mean, assuming they roll out the production version in the next couple of months, then I would go with scale. So if I do, I just don't understand why or how I get back to the original way I had it configured. It's like blowing my mind. Because if I add this to the F stab and I remove this, like where is Proxmox ha handling all the mounting? I don't think it's done in F stab. I think there's some weird configuration file it loads outside of F stab to do its its mounting. But I mean, putting this in F stab would essentially fix it, right? Worst case, let me just see if this even starts. No, because we didn't even copy over. This stuff, I don't even know why I would want this. I wouldn't even want this. I would actually want to remove this shit. And then I would do like this. And we're in. So not the greatest experience, that's for sure, but we are pretty much back where we started. So I would say go with this shit. Go with this guy instead. For sure. Instead of the other one I was looking at. You wanted working, I got you work. No, this is, it's definitely back. It's just weird. I, I, I want to know more about how Proxmox handles um, its directories and its mounting because you can go in the node and configure ZFS and like directories and file systems when you do that, it automatically, um, so for example, watch, if I do, if I create another directory on the unused disk, SDD, and I say, sure, this is another ext4, and I name this one ext4.2, add storage, I assume this is what makes it add it to the data center as storage. So when I do that, It's like, oh, look, you have a, a mounted path on this device. And it's already created over here. But when this doesn't exist anymore, but the file system's still there, how do I, how is it getting mounted? Because I assume 
the F stab isn't getting up updated. Like it's not doing it through the F stab. Yeah, there's nothing in here. So how the shit, what kind of magic is it doing to do all this mounting? But that's for another day. But, um, good luck, gentlemen. I'm off to bed. Hey, I appreciate you, David. Thanks for stopping by, man. But we're, we're about to end soon anyway. Um, I linked you the original post for that. Okay, I'll take a look at that tonight. I am, uh, I am just, my brain is fried at this point. James, uh, ZFS mount, uh, points specified in, uh, data set properties. I, I don't know if you're asking me, that's, that's what I'm trying to figure out. Like where, where does Proxmox store mount points? Well, you would think if I wanted to know, I would just Google it. But, but I guess this is, when we copied it over, I guess it didn't copy that one. Okay, well, that, that answers my question. I guess I should have known that, but interesting. Anyway, I'm freaking, my brain's fried. So what did we, what did we learn today? What did we learn in four hours of doing this? Let's, let's discuss before I end. Um, this shit doesn't work. Don't do this. So if you find this, script um yeah don't don't try to do this it does not work um uh dan lloyd said we learned not to use proxmox proxmox is good for a lot of things uh backing up the host it is not good at that that is for sure um i mean i it's definitely a knock on it I can't sit here and say, oh, it's not a knock on Proxmox and show my bias or anything. But yeah, no, it, Proxmox really needs to update and make it easy for the common folk to to restore a node because this is ridiculous. Um, so yeah, it's a pain in the ass. Don't use this. This script is a lot better. Um, it just copies over the specific configurations that you might want to restore. Although the PVE, it didn't like copying all of it over, something with permissions and not being able to overwrite it. Maybe I need to stop a specific service before I do this, but um, nobody in here is really... I should probably ask. I just... I have like anxiety of asking anything on GitHub because I just assume they're going to come to my house and like make fun of me and give me a swirly or something if I don't ask the question right. But um, it seemed like there were like weird permission issues when I was trying to copy over things to PVE. But other than that, this worked a lot better. Uh, we eventually got back to a working restoration of it. So if you're somewhat familiar with Proxmox, you can uh, MacGyver it to get it working. But I would definitely recommend going with this over the other one. But yeah, we learned that Proxmox is terrible at restoring the host. It's good at restoring containers and VMs, but restoring the host is miserable. So maybe next stream, I have an idea for next stream. We're going to do the same thing, but we're going to do... We're going to do a virtual version of Proxmox backup server and see if we can get that done. Because I know some people do that. And yeah, so yeah, I think that sounds like a good idea. Next stream, 
kill Proxmox again, but this time we're gonna do, we're gonna try to restore it through uh, Proxmox backup server instead. So, yeah, if you don't use, if you don't use that one script, at least take a look at the original source blog. There's a lot of info there. Yeah, I'm gonna take a look at it tonight. I just, I can't, I'm, I'm fraud. My brain's fraud. Um, but that's it. I'm going to end it here. It's been four hours. I got to go to Dallas tomorrow morning and create, I got to make a thumbnail for the video I'm posting tomorrow morning. So, all right, that is it. Um, it seems like most people are still watching on YouTube. I don't know how many people have tuned in through Twitch. Uh, I'm going to try to keep doing these co-streams, I guess. I'd like to get more of a following on Twitch just because it seems like there's a bigger Twitch community in terms of live streaming than there is on YouTube. Um, and the platform is designed a lot better for live streaming than for you, you know, than on YouTube, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, I'll probably just do the continual dual streaming for the foreseeable future, but all right. Um, everyone who has been in the chat, I appreciate you hanging around. Obviously, Alan, um, all the help. Jay Hess, you've been here for the entire time. Y'all are troopers. Um, who else is still here? David, thanks for stopping by. Uh, Dan hopped in. Um, who else is still around? Anybody? I think everybody peaced out, but we had a good, a good number of people hanging out watching me fail, but I hope you learned at least something out of this, out of my failures. Um, if anything, some... Um, information about Proxmox and what not to do. But that's it. Thank you guys for watching. I will have a video tomorrow morning. For those of you that are here, you get a sneak peek. It is about this uh, Raspberry Pi uh, touchscreen, the seven inch touchscreen. It's a pretty basic video. It's only like nine minutes long. It's a quick one. Um, nothing too crazy but i just wanted to show it off because i thought it was pretty cool and useful but that's it see you guys next time i uh hope it goes a lot better but uh yeah uh it jeremy yeah jeremy's been around for a while thank you man uh thanks for stopping by poopy man i relearned swirlies exist for the first time in 10 years yeah you just wait till uh till we're in California, you're going to get like at least 25 swirlies, but all right, that is it. I'm freaking tired. I haven't eaten. I'm going to eat something, then hit the hay. So 